With President Obama ordering a massive new surge of troops, all eyes are on Afghanistan again. But the Americans aren't the only ones getting noticed. Canada's helicopter crews there have been flying some of the most daring missions in history. Our Paul Johnson got a chance to fly with them recently and shows us why they're touted as Kandahar's go-to guys in the sky. I would argue it's, uh, it's the most challenging aviation I've seen to date. Sometimes we might push the envelope a bit, but uh, it's, everything is done safely and we got uh, some very good pilots here. You're about to witness something never seen before on Canadian television and something Canada's Griffin helicopter pilots have recently earned a big reputation for. Weaving our way through the mountains west of Kandahar in complete darkness, the pilots find their destination using night vision goggles. It's equal parts thrilling and terrifying. I get a rush. I love it the way we, most of us love it. On the way, the gunners test out their weapons. We're escorting a Chinook helicopter carrying soldiers about to attack a Taliban IED factory. And the strategy is to surprise them in their beds. High above the landing zone, an airplane drops infrared flares that light up the night, but only if you have night vision. For the Taliban, it's totally dark. Well, initially there were some concerns that the Griffins were too underpowered for this environment. Well, it seems that they're being pushed to their limit. By all accounts, they're rising to the challenge. There are hundreds of helicopters currently flying in southern Afghanistan. Canada's Griffins are the smallest and most recent arrivals here. Dust, heat and altitude are the natural enemies of any chopper and they're found in abundance here, not to mention the Taliban. When I was in Canada I had uh, doubts about what our, exactly what our capabilities would be here. But doubt has turned to confidence. The eight Griffins stationed here have filled a critical mission requirement for NATO forces, handling like a sports car. The Griffins have proven exceptional at the kind of low-level armed escort that is so in demand here. The way we sort of fly this uh, machine is anywhere from 15 feet right up to a couple thousand feet. This kind of combat flying is new to our forces and the troops they escort. They've been outfitted with a menacing minigun on each door, capable of firing thousands of rounds a minute. They may be called miniguns, but they put some big fear into the Taliban, who mostly keep their heads down when the Griffins are on the scene. It's awesome. It's one of the best guns I have had in my life since I'm in the army. In the blur of fields, villages, and homes that rush by them, door gunners demonstrate tremendous skill and courage, having to spot the threat before it can shoot at them, or whoever they're charged with escorting. They know that when we're on the guns, they're safe too. By giving cover to the big troop carrying Chinook choppers, the Griffins allow Canadian soldiers to avoid the dangerous roads here. The Taliban have planted thousands of IEDs. When soldiers do have to move in a ground convoy, the Griffins add another layer of security by inspecting the road from above, buzzing this man in his donkey cart to make sure he's not putting a bomb in that culvert. When a convoy stalls in the middle of dangerous Kandahar City, the Griffins orbit above as a crowd gathers, discouraging any would-be attackers until it can get moving again. The threat is there. Uh, people seem, seem nice, but you always uh, have to expect the unexpected. They may be small in number, but the Griffins are known for their rapid response capabilities. While American crews sometimes need days to get ready for a mission, the Canadians can be airborne in a matter of hours. That means they're the go-to guys here when someone needs help. It's actually turned out we've got the reputation. We're, we're the guys to come call on. If you need something done, you need it done quick and you need it done right. 